Thank you. Please, you may be seated. It's my pleasure to address this class today and to expect that um, we will leave here with something to work with. I'll be addressing the subject, understanding the art of leadership. I have the following lines as introduction to this subject. There is always a place for everyone in space. And all we need to do is to learn how to fly a spacecraft. There is always a place for everyone in space. And all we need is to learn how to fly a spacecraft. But there is much more to flying a spacecraft than to fly an aircraft. There is more to fly an aircraft than to drive a car. One that flies a spacecraft is called an astronaut. The one that flies an aircraft is called a pilot. And the one that moves a car is called a driver. The reason why many have not secured their space, their place in space, is because of the rigor of learning to fly a spacecraft. The reason why many may just end up driving is because of the cost and the challenge of flying an aircraft. The reason why many may never drive is because they're not willing to learn how to drive. So we have different categories of people in the human race. We have crawlers, we have runners, we have drivers, we have pilots, and we have astronauts. For instance, we have billions of birds over in the space of the firmament. Yet, the firmament looks so empty. If you have a way of looking through the sky, through the window here, most of us that are outside, it's so empty. Are the boss on vacation? No. It's too wide for the billions of birds to feel. That's how much there is space for you. There is place for you in space. There is space for any place for everybody and anybody who cares to learn how to fly his spacecraft. Well, for us who are Christians, rapture is coming, both the living and the dead will rise and go on one flight to show how much space there is in space. To so show how much you have 
a place in space. Nobody's taking your seat. Your seat is empty. Nobody's contesting with your own spacecraft. It's yours. Your name is on it. I think we could have said for stop here. <laughs> I mean, so what you need, what anybody will need, is to learn how to fly his own spacecraft. Out of my crave to see the black rays acknowledge their potentials as equal with others, I undertook my studies in human development. That's where I earned my PhD from. And I've developed quite a number of modules to help people see how that you are not inferior in any way to anybody on the planet Earth. And that came out with the, what the director said. It doesn't have to be white to be right. You're on this platform today. is absolutely indigenous. It's created from ingenious platform of solving our indigenous problems. The sun has no yet so, I mean, the sun has not been shielded from shining by a reason of the multitude of birds that are in the sky. Not even their shadow is felt. You have space. You have place in space. You, you have a place, uncontestable place, the place that is only you that can decide to sell off by living it vacant. Back in 1984, in the beginning days of our ministry, I had God say to me, there's a place for you on top if you're interested. I said, I am. Any right person in his right mind <laughs> wants the top. Children in primary school wants the top. Farmers want to be the best farmer anyway. So then whatever I say to you, do it. Let me try to put this across. Someone said quite a few years back, many years back now, that those who work, work with many. Those who run, run with a few because the tracks are limited. But that those who fly, fly alone. Very outstanding statement. Because you, can't, you don't ever see an aircraft towing another one in the air. Every aircraft has to generate adequate ground power to conquer the friction and take off in the air. Or the syndrome of who you know is what matters is zero. It's what you know that matters the most. What you know. So those who walk, walk by common sense. You don't have to go to school to learn how to walk. <laughs> you just uh, grow up and then uh, you see everybody standing, you to want to stand. So you took the first step and then you, you shook a bit. You took the next one, next one, you shook a bit. And then you try to move, you stagger and you fall. You stand up again, Abba, what happened? I must walk. You don't go for lessons. Now, when thou walkest, thou shalt take first step, and then you fall, then you wake up and take another one, and then you stagger, then you fall. No, no, no. There's no lesson. Has it ever occurred to you that no child needs to be told we have to put the nipple of the mother's breast? Common sense. He you didn't put it here. <laughs> I didn't put it on the tummy. And a child wants to wee wee. He doesn't open his mouth. They say, Why is he? I want to wee wee. <laughs> no, he, he just came with him. It's natural sense. So you walk by common sense. You're wrong by principles. But you only fly by instructions. 
uh, what a challenge to this generation who hate instructions with passion. We have a generation of young people that hate instruction with passion. They never will stand up to their parents. No, you can't tell me what to do. It's an infested atmosphere. <laughs> that anyone that must fly a spacecraft must be addicted to instructions. We've been flying our own plane now since 1986, and that's what they call the checklist before the pilot takes off. It is a ritual on daily basis, on every flight basis. Checklist, yes. They'll be reading it out. It's not, like, don't miss any point. They read the 52 or 60 items before any flight is considered safe to move. No, I don't like it. No, you must like it. That's why um, there are top notchers in aviation schools are called instructors. And when you're a professor emeritus in aviation school, you're a chief instructor. Chief what? It, they are instructions. They are not principles that academics argue. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and then they now vote. They don't vote in this one. It's, Direct point A to temperature this before motion, point two to temperature this before racing on the wrong way. It must reach this point before you try to apply the up trust. Now they, they are all calculated. I don't feel like you don't have to feel like you have to do like. <laughs> so anyone among us in this class that really desires to take his place in space, must love instructions with passion. You must, you must have demonstrable passion for instructions. That's why heroes are reducing in number. Generation after generation, they are reducing in number. People who dare what others have never dared, they are reducing in number because they are not prone to instructions. What I've shared thus far is a clear illustration that there's a place for everyone in space. <laughs> there's a place for everyone in space. That should go down to folks in academics. It should go down to folks in industry. It should go down to young, imagined entrepreneurs. That's a place for everyone in space. Now, I've tried to redefine leadership from its traditional concept. This Definitions are germane, the original. They are thought through statements that is tested. And many are on a flight today, moving gradually towards becoming an astronaut. <laughs> um, and I think They are very few in generations. They are not designed to be few, but this syndrome of, I've sent my children to school, they have graduated, I have a house, I have a car, what am I doing for in life? Isn't that enough? How many lives have you touched? How many hopeless people have you given hope? What can be called your impact in your field? What will your world remember you for? Not that you are craving, you are not craving for fame, but what will be called your footprint when you are no longer here? Those big textbooks you read, 
They are authored by individuals. <laughs> a lot of materials in PhD class, they are written by people with non-PhD. Have you checked it yourself? <laughs> and then we joyfully recommend it. Exactly so. Now those folks just uh, took responsibility to put in place their discoveries. Now, they may not have discovered as much as you. They are just smarter than you. And then you have to read their books. Now, when you go to the library, just go and check. How many of those great authors that the world rec recommends today in various subjects have a PhD? So you, it's, not, it's not the training that one receives alone, but the engagement of the discoveries made. The engagement. Otherwise, the ones who taught you, why are they not flying at your level? I mean, you can teach a Greek, and you just get a PhD, a DSC in crop science, and you don't have a farm. So will your technology qualify you for harvest? So let's run through a few of these lines. Now, leadership is not occupying a position. It's making outstanding contributions. There are many, many people in many fields today who had very high grades, high grades in school. First class. Even first class upper. <laughs> <laughs> and second class upper most. But can't compete with a down below the line to two in the same field. Now, he didn't steal. He wasn't a victim of exam practice, but he did not engage what he found as much as the other one does. Leadership is not occupying a seat, it's accomplishing a feat. It's your outstanding accomplishment that gets you on the top, on the line in your field. Great leaders are not those with chains of degrees, but those who change their world. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong in chains of degrees. There's nothing wrong with it. But the question is, what contributions can you say yourself that you have made? What feat can you say you have accomplished? We run the World of Faith Bible Institute in our uh, mission. Now, I drafted it 90%, the content. I taught it 80% in the beginning. I taught the teachers who helped me to teach, who will join me to teach. Now, it's all over about 60 nations today, helping people to discover themselves and make many out of their life. Outstanding leaders, number four, are not those with barrage of titles, but those who impact, whose impact, sorry, constitute footprints on the sand of time. 
And about the, uh, we had somebody in Nigeria that had 300 titles. I don't have to mention his name. The titles are too many. So when he died, they were reading the titles. Ah. <laughs> High chief, low chief, medium chief. What can be called your footprints in your department, in the place where you work, in the things you do? Number five, the real worth of a leader is not, is in the value that he adds, the contributions he makes, the feats he accomplishes, and the impact he engenders. The real worth of a leader. It's not a big speech that everybody's clapping for you about. I mean, talk is cheap. <laughs> but this man was his worth. And I mean his real worth. What value is he adding? Or has he added? What contributions can be traceable to him? What feats has he accomplished? And what impact has he engendered? These are all self-examination questions. Anybody can ask himself anytime. Leadership is not talking the lead. It's taking the lead. Leadership is not in an appointment, but in one's attainment. There are many political leaders today that are not worth monitors in their family. That is, there is nothing in them that qualifies them to lead their family, their own family. In their clan, when they mention their name, oh, forget about it. You are a year man. You know, in our country, there's nobody you can put in place. Otherwise, there's nothing inside him. When he opens his mouth, woo, he be smelling. It's not an appointment, but in the attainment of individuals. It's not in the titles we wear. FOMC, Grand Commander Benway, Grand Commander Niger, Grand Commander Delta. <laughs> I'm yet to an, uh, attend an award ceremony in my life that I went because I'm going to be awarded. Mm -hmm. One time I said, you say I'm giving, uh, is it member of Niger or uh, commander of Niger? I said, hey, who is the commander of Benway? <laughs> because when I was born, I was in command of Niger and Benway. <laughs> Every Nigerian and Benway. He goes to the master, Niger and Benway. You don't need to be awarded. He's already awarded. <laughs> They say some people are looking for it. Ah, give them my own for free. Not for sale, just give them. I will give it to them. My has no time. So <laughs> that's not where leadership lies. Leadership is not an endowment, therefore, it's the product of an accomplishment. Now, watch. This is very traditional and it has to be reordered. Leadership is not just about leading people, it's about taking the lead in a given task. It's not about leading people. It's about taking the lead. You remember there are some monitors when you were in primary school. Are they leaders of the class? No, not necessarily. Most of them even fail. <laughs> they are chosen based on size, perhaps. 
who can challenge anyone making noise. Stop! Stop. <laughs> Some fellows are too skinny to be asked to be monitored because they can push them down. <laughs> And some are too short that they are, they are members can look at them on the forehead and <laughs> knock them down. So the factors are different. It's about taking the lead in the given time. So you have today a leading entrepreneur is taking the lead in that sector. A leading construction engineer a leading construction company. Amen. Then you have a leading evangelist who is routing nations and cities. You have a leading teacher of the world who travels the nations, you know, distributing the bread given him by Christ. Amen. A leading fashion design is covered two continents, three continents, and five continents, and it's going. So leadership is validated by taking the lead in your field. That's where it begins. I still believe we have to redefine democracy as far as uh, our part of the world is concerned. Who is qualified to contest? That should be a definition. It's not Jack and Harry. It's not people are not defined was a national assembly. No. People have never seen a budget in their life, in their, li their entire life. They are now sitting over the budget of a state they say, what is it? It's a budget. Of what? <laughs> Where should I sign? <laughs> and the destiny of many are hanging on it. Ah, salaries for teachers? It's too much. It's too much. Cut it by half. <laughs> no consideration, nothing. No consideration for anything. You know why? Zero capacity. So why don't we run capacity test before anybody qualifies to contest? Not because he has money or stolen some money from somewhere. So sometimes you wake up out of the bed and just boom. Hmm. <laughs> when there's nothing inside, what to come out outside? Nothing. So in a situation where you have less than 30% that are illiterate, that are literate, there should be a definition, sir. Not that you are, you are examining whether you have a school cert or not. That is, we should leave that area. Not that you are swearing to show your age. You have to swear. No. no. We should leave that realm. <laughs> they say you are 50. You say, no, I'm to 40. Is it how? I've sworn. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So when they are, they record it, they should put a geometer to check. How old are these cells? <laughs> Say, hello, sir, your cell is 2015. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Before it becomes democracy, we should redefine democracy as it applies to us in this part of the world. Every player in the field of sports is a potential star. But what each player invests in terms of training, self-discipline, dedication, and sacrifice is what determines which player becomes a star. I mean, you have a football pitch of 11 players on either side. Every player on both sides is a potential star. Because they saw him playing well before he could get on that, on that, on that team. But how much each one invests in terms of training, in terms of um, self-discipline, dedication and sacrifice, because it determines who emerges a star player. So even when a team loses a game, the poachers, the player poachers, have still picked one or two that are star players there to lure them into another company. 
another club at a higher rate. So there are no group stars. There are no group stars. Leaders are readers. Now we're coming down to the issues. And every committed leader is a potential leader. Leaders are readers. And that tells you where we are, where we are in our part of the world. Particularly in the political arena. You don't have readers who are manipulators. Self-centered individuals looking for more and more from any source and anyhow. Leaders are learners, number 13, and every committed learner is a potential leader. Henry Ford once said that when you stop learning, you are old, whether at 20 or at 80. So there are old people at 20. They are out of touch with anything. And whether at 80 or at 20, well, if you keep learning, you are young, whether at 80 or at 20. There are people that are 80 years old and are still young, current, vibrant, agile. We have one a three year old um, young lady in church. He sends prayer requests to all our service group members for the week. I mean, prayer, uh, things to pray about from the prayer manual. That look, those things are too many. Some of them won't even know which one to take. So he takes from each one and sends to them on her own phone 83. Leaders are learners. And every committed learner is a potential leader. So leadership is all about taking the lead, setting the pace, and blazing the trail in one's field. To my mind, anyone who has not handled some level of positions or uh, you know, resources should not be tried at all, should, should not be considered a candidate for some political offices, should not be considered. Because we have nothing to offer. We have nothing to offer. In a world of contracts here, what, what we do and what they do around the world is find out the worth of this individual in building construction endeavors. Find out what level of jobs he's done before. So if he has handled 500 million, we can try him with 800 million job. But if he has only handled 100, we won't try him with 500. He will learn that. <laughs> so if on ordinary contract, companies do that, then imagine someone who is handling destiny of people. Amen. It's like somebody just coming out of medical school and then is now being appointed a consultant. It's a risk. It will kill more people than if you are not there in the practice. He just wears a uniform, tie everything, Scott, cut. Ah. He <laughs> 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 <It> don't die. <laughs> hey, <man. laughs> so we have a lot of amateurs in places. Creating turmoil and trauma for innocent people because of their lack of adequate equipment if they're equipped at all. Well, all I've said implies anybody can become a leader 
if he's willing to fulfill the demands of leadership. Anybody. There is a leadership seed in every child of God. In fact, in every man. We inherited that from Adam. It was corrupted, but it has been recovered. So we don't have no excuse. That's why there is no generation without stars. There is no generation without stars. May you end up being listed among the stars in your generation. <laughs> but we have to cultivate that seed, nurture it, so that it can begin to produce fruit. This is why how much we are investing today in terms of time, energy, and resources in the pursuit of God will determine where we will find ourselves tomorrow. Let's look at some five biblical steps to realizing our full leadership potentials. Let me start with a very familiar story to quite a number of us here. There's a young chap called James Owen. He was a high school boy and then uh, asked his coach, his sports coach, hello sir, I want to, be, to become a sports star. He said, are you sure you want to become a star? Yes. He said, there are four steps on the ladder to get in there. I'm sure his, eyes, his ears will have stood up. What are they? Determination, discipline, dedication, and sacrifice. He said, Please come again, sir. Determination, discipline, dedication, and sacrifice. Eh? What's the last one? Sacrifice. Is this for? I'm getting there. So the small boy took hold of that and began to run with it. Simple, simple, simple instruction. It doesn't take a volume of things for the best in you to come out. It only calls for your readiness to engage with what has made others if you want to be made after their kind. Well, cut the long story short, by 1923 Berlin Olympics, James Owen emerged a three gold medalist in that event. Three gold medalists. One gold medal, medalist in Olympic is a, is a feat. Then to now have three on a row in one Olympic uh, is something to talk about. Now, his long jump record took 22 years to be broken. Long, they call it broad jump in those days. He dated back his exploit to those simple instructions. To those simple instructions. Somebody's going to date back his exploit in life to this introductory lecture of the master's class. He picked it up and ran with it and had things to show at the end. I've also shared the story of two high school boys um, that went to school in the same environment. And then after school, each one went his way. One went about just jobbing from one food business to another, fast food, slow food, or just doing that. Amen. So they met 19 years after. The biographer said they were continents apart. How much? Continents apart. As you cross the Atlantic, the Indian Ocean, before you can find the second, when you find one here. Now, what has he done? He has invested in about 600 books. By the time they met, 
he was worth two hundred thousand dollars an hour. You want him for an hour in your company? Two hundred thousand. The other one was worth seven thousand. I mean, seven dollars fifty cents an hour. And the continents apart, their galaxies apart. They are galaxies apart. By virtue of each one's level of investment in creating the future that they desire. The other young man likes food. And so working the food something, you won't lack food because the food you serve, you must eat. And when you run a restaurant, you can't stop from eating. There are people here in this guest house and they eat every day, whether they have guests or not. <laughs> I can't even tell whether some of them bring their family members to eat. As long as you are working in the kitchen, eating is free. Apart from what you are eating in terms of tasting the food, <laughs> the one you now serve yourself after you have eaten. Amen. His goal is to eat. So he found a place where he can always eat. He just began to change from one place to another to see whether this food is tastier than the other one. The other young man was investing. Now, watch. That's like becoming a Nobel laureate from the corner of your room. Hello? That's also a pointer to how much loaded the human person is. If he will explore the treasures hid in himself. There are five steps on the ladder from scriptures on the way up. First, have a vision for your life. You never become a go-getter without established goalposts. Have a vision for your life. We have this from two scriptures only, Ecclesiastes 10, 5 to 18. And then um, Luke 12, 49 and 50. Number two, learn how to pursue the vision of your life. Oh, I want to become a medical doctor. That's a small boy here saying that in primary four, then you better tell him to ever become a medical practitioner. You will need two more years where you are now six years in secondary school, four years for pre-med, and then two years or three years for your surgical classes. You now begin as a house officer. Shubo, that is learning to accomplish your dream is a greater task than knowing your dream. Uh, so many dreams never see the light of day. Because people run around with the dream without learning how to see it accomplished. So the Bible would need 2662 to ever imagine one and begin on the race. What is vision? Without a vision, you see people made naked. You don't know where you're going, you just become miserable. The moment one does not know where it's going, it's sure to get nowhere. You just want to know where you're going to get somewhere. The first requirement, therefore, for potential leaders is to locate a direction for his life. If the iron is blunt and you don't sharpen the edge, you will need to put in a lot of strength. But wisdom is profitable to direct. Lack of vision will make a slave out of any prince. 
I've seen servants upon horses and princes walking on foot as servants. Lack of vision will make a peasant out of a king. Has he ever occurred to you that we are redeemed into a kingdom of kings? Amen. There are no peasants in the kingdom. Every child of God is redeemed a king to reign on the earth. So they call the master the king of kings. The king of kings. We're in the kingdom of kings. Everyone has a reserved crown for him. Your crown will not be lost. Amen. Vision is the number one step in the making of a leader. Vision is at the root of outstanding leadership. Leadership is tied to a well-defined task that is knowing what one is out to do and having a clear vision for one's life. Because until one's task is defined, it's that the potential, it's leadership potentials cannot have expression. You, we need to know where we are going before we can take the lead there. Today we're talking about uh, leading entrepreneurs, a leading lawyer, a leading academic, a leading preacher, etc. It's like that all the way through. Vision in this context is not just about having a dream, it's about locating God's dream for, for one's life, for those who are believers. Now the wisdom factor. The labor of the foolish will is every one of them because he knows not how to go to the city. Wisdom is just about the know-how of a given task. Know what it takes to get it done. Interestingly, there are no finish lines in the school of wisdom. It's an ever-growing demand on anyone's life. A wise man shall hear an increase in learning. There is no end to it. One of the most endowed fellows in scriptures was Daniel. I, Daniel, understood by books. There's a place where endowment stops. There's a place where books take off to open you to the next things about your life. Now, let me tell my short story here. Jesus called me into ministry very vivid calling, no mistake. But I went through Egan's school of faith. I went through the school of biographical studies in ministry. I went through the lines of those who have gone before to where I'm trying to go into, to learn the steps they took, the mistakes they made, so I can avoid it. The demands on their life, I can subscribe to it. I went through Yonggi Cho's School of Church Growth. He taught me well. You know, I've never met him. I've never met him. When our missionaries arrived in uh, Seoul, he was so excited. I've been trying to meet Brother David. I went through the school of church growth, Yonggi Cho School of Church Growth. I went through institutional, institutional studies towards the takeoff of Covenant University. I had nine case studies, Harvard, Yale, Oxford, Cambridge. I had them stocked up in me. I don't have to open any book or my iPad or anything to reel out what they were like. The know-how is as vital as the vision. You don't have an understanding of the know-how, the vision is a balloon vision. You just go through and then it's gone. I went through Copeland's School of Kingdom Prosperity. And now you find us embarking on this multi-billion project. One of a kind in a most relaxed fashion. Amen. <laughs> I had a number of things from God, but I saw the practicality of it in a man. 
And I needed to know how that is in integrated to real life. I crave for a revival from Spurgeon School of Revival. I crave very hard. Lord, I want to see a revival in my lifetime. I was doing that in 83. We've been seeing revivals ever since. Upon one revival upon another, after another. That's how to contact the know-how. Simply put, wisdom is applied knowledge. Wisdom is not just wise talk. It's the know-how in one's field. And just like knowledge is the principal raw material for wisdom, in the same vein, wisdom is the principal raw material for the making of a leader. This is why one, one may never come across a leader of worth who is not a committed reader. No one will sit with you and be telling you everything about everything. You have to go and find out. Somebody asked me one time, please tell me in a nutshell, what does it take to succeed in ministry? I said, in what? In a nutshell? There are many, many naughty shares, and they keep imagining every day. So you better learn how to crack. Naughty shares, they don't end. We cannot sit down wishing to get to the top. We must learn how to climb our way there. I think that is the thought behind the master's class. As I once noted, the top is open and free, but everyone has to make his way there. Can I have you lift up your right hand? Is anybody pushing it down? Can your hand lift up yourself? You say, didn't you hear Chancellor? Hand, lift up yourself. And say, I don't, I can't. I'm not permitted to. You have to lift me. I can't lift myself. The top is as open as your hand just went up on his own without any force. There is no demon pressing your hand. No, don't go down. <laughs> you know, the slightest thing here they say is a demon. No. <laughs> you know, the cheapest way to fall, just release your energy. <laughs> You're out. It's not easy. Nobody needs to push you. When you are not willing anymore to stand, you fall. I believe at the end of this, we will be singing a new song. Amen. Now let's run through self-discipline for the few minutes we have. What is self-discipline? It's operating as demanded, not as convenient in the pursuit of any given task. Operating as demanded, not as convenient in the pursuit of any given task. It's investing your time instead of spending it or squandering it. <laughs> Discipline is being where you should be at the time you should be there, doing what you should be doing as demanded by your task. George Washington once said, discipline is the soul of an army. It makes small numbers formidable it procures success to the weak and esteem to all. You can't tell how much you carry until you engage with the virtue of self-discipline. There's so much in you. Those who blew it in, blew it in school, not that they're not intelligent, it's misapplied intelligence. They jump the fence when they should be in the library. Amen. 
They go around the airport to greet people who are traveling. Please, when you get there, remember me. <laughs> I need to leave this country very fast. <laughs> he has an exam the following day. So he comes back. That's why I don't like this country. <laughs> <laughs> you will write an exam if you go somewhere else. There's no place where you don't class without writing an exam. Now, the weather here is fair. There, you are chilly. <laughs> and you must still be reading. My God. There is no hiding place for a lazy man. There are many poor people in America. Many poor, very many poor in Europe. Many die like chicken the only winter. Take responsibility if you don't want to die as a liability. You will never find an accomplished individual in any field who is not self-disciplined. Therefore, self-discipline is essentially being a law to oneself. This is what I must do and is what I must do and I will do. Now, diligence. Our working knowledge of the truth will never be a substitute for diligence. You know what it is, but how much are you engaging with it? Hard work is a must for anyone to emerge a leader. It's not just grace. Grace without labor will result in disgrace. It is hard work that makes high flyers. Nothing works without someone at work. Not at world, at work. Yes. Hard work never wears people out. It is wrong work that does. Say with me, hard work never wears people out, but wrong work. Our leadership potentials will never have expression beyond the quality of our engagement. You sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. You sow bountifully, you reap bountifully. Work is a catalyst for the little potentials in us to blossom. There are some reactions that would never would lie dormant until you introduce a catalyst to it. Work it. I used to know a uh, headmaster of a primary school. And suddenly I learned that he was going to the law school. He has passed his law degree from University College in London by correspondence, not internet, where you just go and uh, that is you go to post office and wait. You call, excuse me, I've not sent this something. You you collect your correspondence materials from post office. Now, he left all the other teachers who were playing are you under the trees, who were scrubbing with a maze. He landed in law school. Work is a catalyst. We must have to labor to create the future we desire. The master of masters said, I must work. What? The leader whose impact is still speaking louder by the day after 2,000 years said, I must work. The creator of the entire universe said, I'm still working. Christ said, my father worked either too, and I work. So who am I? To think that by folding my hand, I'll fulfill his agenda for my life. It's the quality of our labor that defines our ultimate future. Quality. Quality. It's one thing to go to work and another to be working. Quality. Quality. You can go to the library and be playing. Quality. Quality. You can go to class and not take any note. You see you typing something, or you are typing a note to your friend. I, I hope to be out of this stupid campus. <laughs> <laughs> Latest by Thursday, so let's meet. That place we wanted to go in Abuja, we should go there now. Hmm? 
Have you seen that guy who is to bring that thing to us at the airport? He's already planning his own suicide. Right in the class where the teacher is waiting. The teacher is waiting, and you think he's... There was a syndrome in um, South Korea that led to the closing of 1,000 churches on the average for 10 years running. How? Uncontrolled use of tablet. They will close the service. Young people won't know that they have closed. Until you look around, you can't see anybody. <laughs> it was browsing throughout. In the intensity of our labor lies our future. Take responsibility. Now let's go through the last one, the most distasteful of them all, sacrifice. Sacrifice is going the extra mile and paying the extra price. Now this becomes very productive when you know where you are going. So you are investing in the right direction. Now, it is burning the extra midnight oil. Sacrifices. It's a universal demand for the leadership potential in us to find full expression. Full expression. To assess the topmost top in our feed, we must be willing to pay the topmost price. Amen. <laughs> I... I had a lawyer, close friend of mine, and I said one day, jokingly to him, I said, if I have any case that I'm interested in losing, you are the one that will give it to me. <laughs> because I know I will lose it cleanly. <laughs> I never found him reading in my life. I never found him saying he's looking for a book in my life. He's so relaxed. If I have any case, I, I'm interested in losing. And look, there's no point fighting with those people. <laughs> Help me lose the case. I'll call him and give it to him. Because he won't see anything there. The other lawyer will just flow. <laughs> no one can ever get out of life more than what is willing to put to it. The Americans will say there's no free lunch in life. And so it's paying the abnormal price that makes a world leader. Say what we pay the abnormal price <laughs> is what makes a world leader. One may make a living by his profession but we can only make impact by our dedication. No what leader has a normal schedule. No what leader possesses a normal habit. No what leader has a normal lifestyle. It takes a global price to generate global impact. One cannot get out of life more than what is willing to put into it. No life can ever be more impactful than is dedicated. No life can be ever can, can make the most of his life without coming out of his comfort zone. Until a seed is dedicated to the earth, it cannot bring forth fruit. Within a seed lies a potential plantation, but not without dedication to the earth. Every full yielding fruit has its own seed in itself. Your star is inside you. In the same vein, every, man's, every man has his star within himself. Now, Make your choice. I conclude with this statement. There is a place for everyone and for anyone in space. If he's only willing to learn how to fly his space craft. There's also room for anybody to be walking, in fact, crawling. Crawling or walking or running, or driving, it depends on how much you intend to invest, how much you are prepared to invest in creating the future you desire. And the good news is, you have the leadership potential required to make you a man and a woman of impact, if you choose to. The ball is in your court. Thank you. <laughs>